All right, ladies, this is Alex from My for Attraction 2.0. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to argue with a guy the right way, okay? Because it seems like some of you guys think you guys are experts and pros at it, but in reality, is a lot of you guys suck at it. And it's not because you guys don't have the skill set, but because it takes a lot of emotional um, regulation in order to have an argument because emotions ruin arguments emotions make things exaggerate things emotions make you defensive Emo emotions causes you to not see the truth even when it's right in front of you all right so that's what we we're going to talk about um but when I, i'm on my way here you know i had no had no kids staring at me that's one thing okay no evil birds fucking with me um actually there's like an exercise class over here look let me show you right here boom see right there right Th those, those are mothers with their kids right and when I went there, they were doing um, they were doing a push up, no, um, pull up, no, um, some sit ups, and you know the you, you know the exercise where you go like this, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> but it was actually with their babies, <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? Finally, those kids are being put to use for once, you know, being useful. <laughs> and like one of the babies' face was like, like this. He was like, I, I wasn't born into this world for this. <laughs> Oh man! Rather than making them lose their minds, they're making them, they're helping them lose weight. So that's a good thing, you know, getting them helping, helping them get in shape. That's good for them. Um, for once, babies are being useful. But let's get started. Essentially, when we argue with people, we usually believe we're right most of the time. When we argue, 100% of the time, we believe we're right. That's the truth, right? Because of, we're arguing something. But half of the time, we're being biased. Almost, actually, most of the time, we're being biased. Even the side that's right. So that's a problem because when there's bias, the other side doesn't believe you. Even though you may have a point because they know you're biased, they're going to they're gonna have resistance. So a lot of people, particularly couples, they argue with defensiveness. Now, where does this defensiveness come from? It comes from a lack of self-esteem. This is the truth. Is that being wrong is, a, is, is almost losing your sense of self. You defend your position like you're defending yourself. Even though you're defending an idea, a mental concept that's not even real, it feels like you have to be right. Now, that feeling of having to be right is a problem, is where a lot of people encounter resistance. Especially if you're hurt, especially if there's not a lot of things you're going, there's, there's not a lot, especially if you, there's not a lot of things going on in your life. So how do you argue the right way? Because when you're arguing with a guy, it usually means you're trying to resolve something. The issue is, is that when you argue, we usually argue with our emotions rather than our logic. And the problem with emotions is that there's no real solution. There is, logic cannot, okay, logic cannot fix emotional, I, I, emotional turbulence per se. So something you have to realize is that before you even argue, you got to first pick your battles. That's one thing. Learn how to pick your battles. Pick the right battles, which means to lose battles intentionally. In the beginning of the relationship, lose battles on purpose. Just so you, that you could build up some currency. So that when the moment comes for you to have an argument, you're the one that has actually lost battles in the past. And you didn't mind. Now the reason why I say it is because you want to lose battles that you don't care about. Battles, arguments that don't have a lot of emotional, emotional um, investment. Intentionally lose the battles because what's going to happen is that you're going to begin to develop the reputation of someone who doesn't have an ego. So, the, so then when the moment comes for you to argue, guess what? There's less resistance. Now, it would have been different because a lot of relationships, a lot of guys disagree with, with a girl because they know they're stubborn. Sometimes you even just disagree with them just to prove them wrong for once. So when you develop the reputation of someone who is okay with being wrong, people can believe you more. So that's one thing. Second thing is that when you're, when you're arguing with someone, be, always be alert of any defensiveness. And I always talk about this. I talk about this particularly because I was raised with my mom, and my mom always argued, you know? And my parents always argued, my sister always argued, and so this is something that you always have to be aware of. Something that I noticed that always worked is noticing your defensiveness, noticing why you need to be right from an emotional perspective. So when you're talking and when you're arguing, just become aware of your emotions. Ask yourself, maybe I'm wrong. Ask yourself, am I trying to feel better through this argument? And observe it, right? What, allow, what that allows you to do is to take, take a step back. That allows you to actually not be the emotion, but rather be the logic of, of the emotion. You, 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 you can argue from a logical perspective, right? And so that enables you to see the arguments from both sides. But you always have to be willing to ask yourself, maybe I'm wrong. What, hap what would happen if I was wrong? 
you see and also be on alert of your emotional defensiveness because what happens is that when you get defensive people also get defensive people react to your defensiveness now another thing is that when you're not defensive through becoming aware of your defensiveness that's what you got to just become aware of your defensiveness and your bias people will react to your def non-defensiveness by themselves being non-defensive you you selectively surrender to them surrender to the argument through letting go of the emotional resistance and that would allow men to open up to you to be more to be more to be more open to be wrong because that's pretty much a problem is that most people when you're stubborn people are not going to want to um people are not going to want to feed that ego of you and so when you argue with someone and you notice that they don't mind being wrong you could tell i mean there are subtle things in the way that someone communicates that says i don't mind being wrong and guess what when you feel that it's a lot easier to talk to them it really is right and to be honest with you if you just keep this pr this principle of developing the reputation of someone who is honest and it's okay with being wrong um selectively losing battles just so that you could gain some currency some 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 currency in terms of honesty so that when a moment comes for you to argue with someone they don't say damn this guy's just being defensive this guy's just, this guy's always trying to be right they don't have that so that you can have a non-biased perspective and also letting go of your defensiveness which will enable them to also let go of their own defensiveness because they're not going to feel a wall they're going to feel like an open channel through you you're going to be like oh right this uh, this guy's open this guy's um open to my this this girl's open to my ideas it allows people to actually be open to your own points and your own point of views because pretty much what people a lot of people don't even argue about the points people just want to be right now why do people want to be right they want to be right because it feels good it enhances their sense of self when they're wrong what happens they see an image of them being wrong and it's not usually pretty and so that's pretty much it it's very simple and it's not about no tactics. It's not about, you know, how to manipulate them. No, it's about just being someone who's genuinely okay with being wrong. And because a lot of relationships, once you notice yourself tallying up battles that you're right and battles that he's wrong and trying to get gain the upper hand in terms of honesty and morality, that's pretty much a sign that the relationship is not good. You guys will always be looking, well, are you wrong? Uh, let me see. Because the other thing is that even though if you win an argument, you really didn't win when you win an argument by shutting them up and by proving them wrong what's gonna happen is that you harbor resentment you harbor resentment in the guy's in the guy's mind and so the guys are gonna find trying to find another way to get revenge to helping you be wrong and so that's why people pick your arguments people always argue because they lost the last battle and they want to win and so that's why i want you to be the betrayal one and actually lose the battles so that he doesn't harbor any resentment lose battles that you don't mind losing lose battles that appear to be important to you but it's important to him so that he can feel good about himself and that you, so that he can enhance his, uh, his, um, his self-esteem. And that's what he's doing. You know, you got to realize that a lot of the times these battles are not about being right or wrong. Okay, it's more about emotions. It's more about fulfilling an emotional lack sometimes, most of the time. Because a lot of these, a lot of the arguments that couples have doesn't, are not even based on logic. They're just based on just wanting to be right. And what the fuck? Motherfuckers, relax, straight. And when you want to be right, you're willing to look through a lot of the facts that are important just to prove your point. You can't do that. And the, it happens to the best of us where we, we become biased. And as soon as you become biased, boom, people sense that. And you can't see the truth. So it's always important to ask yourself, maybe I'm wrong. Or am I trying to feel better through this argument? And once you're able to evaluate the intention behind your actions, then you're able to see through the veil of smoke, through the veil of illusion, through the veil of emotion, then you're able to see whether or not, mm, my goodness in heaven, what the, the fuck? Damn, girl, looking all cute and shit. You're able to see whether or not she's, um, not she, whether or not he's, um, his arguments are, whether or not you're being biased or not, right? And, um, yo, anyways, it's Alex from MindfulAttraction.org. I'm going to be posting another video today up. I'm actually also going to be posting a new podcast today. And it's going to be based on Chapter 4, Robert Greene's um, book, um, The 40-Year Laws of Power. Chapter 4 is based on saying less. Some of you guys are going to have to look at that, which is also based on this art, um, on this discussion about arguments, all right? Anyways, this is Alex from Mindful Attraction 2.0. Um, I'm hoping you guys have a good day. And if you guys need one-on-one -on -one coaching, go to mindfulattraction.org slash coach in a pocket. And you guys are able to see the programs that I have. Anyways, enjoy your day. And if you guys want to donate to the channel, you can go to my, you can go to uh, Patreon. I'm gonna leave the link below, but it's Patreon slash MA20. Have a good day. Bye bye.